Tyler, it is great to see you. Thank you for being on the show. I'm assuming you're in this, you're at your studio. Is that where you are? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, in uh, Soundstage 5, the Diane Carroll Soundstage, yeah, yeah. Oh but my. man, we gotta get, listen, we gotta get a vaccine or something. This is, this is, come on, come on. <laughs> we, come on, man. We have fun together. We, we fly not... planes and race cars and we, how can we do that here? So, yeah, I love it. Please, let's just get one. Just, if yeah. anyone's listening, come on, Tyler Perry wants one. Let's go. I mean, that's I've right, been asking. That's right. I've been asking. That's right. Yeah, Medea's working on one, but I don't think anybody wants to take it right away. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's kind of like injecting bleach into the body with like a light and making sure it works. That was her idea first. So, <laughs> uh, how is uh, how is the quarantine? Did you, you create like a, a a bubble of this everyone in your world, or just you? Yeah, I've yeah I've got 377 people in quarantine. Starting uh, we just wrap for a week, so we were, we wrap we shoot a show for two weeks. We go home a week. Come back two more weeks. So we're getting ready to start our final show. It'll be it's a three-week stretch. So everybody's home right now. They start checking in tomorrow, retesting tomorrow, and, and we're going to go from there. It's, it's, it's like adult summer camp, you know. I, I was telling them, I was like, guys, listen, I know you're all here and beautiful, young, single people. I can protect you from COVID, but I can't protect you from the clap. So, you know, it's all <laughs> you got to just do. You, you got you to gotta handle that for yourself. So yeah, this come is, on. This is about COVID free. I can do yeah. so much. Yeah, I can only yeah. do so can't much. Can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you maintaining the, the pace that you're always doing or, or are things moving a little slower? No, no, no. We haven't slowed down. I mean, my crew, I had to have a, a smaller crew so our moves take longer. But no, we're, we're, we're rocking and rolling, man. And, and we have movies in the evening on the lawn. We have a, a four or five different food trucks. We have an alcohol truck. It's, it's really, we're, we're, we're enjoying it as we're, do, as we're working. Gosh, that is fantastic. Yeah. I, 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 you you uh, got some news uh, recently that you're going to receive the Governor's Award at this year's Emmys ceremony. Uh, what, what does that mean to you? Wouldn't you know it, they do it at a year where everything's virtual. I said, listen. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I don't give a damn. You tell me where it is. I'm showing up in full hazmat suit. I will be there because because uh, it's such a it's such an incredible honor to, and to think that the governors would actually consider me for this is, is beyond. I'm blown away by it. Uh, well, you definitely deserve the recognition for everything you're doing. But uh, I, I got to uh, say, you. during this pandemic and uh, you're, you've really been looking out for others and helping people even just your donations, you're giving to individuals, you're, you, you, you cover grocery bills for the elderly, uh, you help local restaurant workers. Uh, why is it important for you to give directly to the people? Well, well, just look around at how, how much direct anger and sadness and division and uh, everybody's going into, everybody's grabbing a color and running to a corner. And nobody's coming together. So I wanted to just be out there doing things that inspire people because I feel like if I do it, it'll inspire other people to stop, stop so much of this division and come together because where change happens is in the middle. So every time I'm giving, I'm hoping that I'm inspiring somebody else to do the same. Yeah, you definitely inspired me to do, uh, to do more because I saw that and I was like, oh, I'm just going to get delivery even if I don't want delivery. And I'll just tip <laughs> the first thing I go, I'll just put it in the right. freezer. I'm stuck to, like, just to, to keep people uh, fed and get, get, get them money and get something uh, moving. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I also read a uh, beautiful essay that you wrote uh, for People magazine in the wake of uh, George Floyd's murder. Uh, mm. It was very uh, powerful and, 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 and moving. What, what is it like for you to sit down and write that? Was, did you say, I have to do something, or did somebody ask you to? Or? No, that was hard. I was so troubled uh, by, by, it, uh, by his death. And I, I, uh, when I started to put pen to paper, I, I had a flood of emotion. I was in tears by the time I got through the first couple of sentences because I didn't realize how much of it I had been carrying and how much of it for so long. And when, what, what, what happened out of all of that tragedy is seeing all races galvanized together to, to stand up against uh, police brutality. It was, it was really uh, uh, moving and inspiring on so many levels. So I was glad to see that, because that's when change happens. Black, black and brown people are only 12 to 14 percent of the population. So we need everyone to make, the, make a change happen. And to see us all coming together, that's what America is, us standing together as one, not, not being divided and pitted against each other. Uh, two months after writing it now, where, where's your head at now? 
Well, I got to tell you, I was really, really hopeful in the beginning uh, because I, I thought, okay, everybody's galvanizing. This is going to be great. But what I'm seeing now troubles me because um, it's being weaponized in this political climate. It's being Black Lives Matter is being pulled apart and, and, and ripped here. And, and what I tell people about my life and what I've done is, listen, two years ago when a white police officer was shot in the head for trying to stop a shoplifter, I reached out to his family to see what I can do to help them. Uh, and with George Floyd and Rashad Brooks and Sicoria, this eight-year-old who was killed, at a Wendy's restaurant, I reached out to, to see what I can do to help. It's not about race, it's about what you do uh, and who you are as, as, as a human being. And humanity is real for all of us. So I was trying to make sure that we all know that humanity comes in all shades and sizes and you have to treat people as if they're human beings rather than as if they're just, they're dismissing them because of the, their race or whatever. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. We, 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 we can do better, I think, it was, was, was the big point that I think was getting out there. I just hope that we keep having these conversations until there is actual change. And you go, yeah. That, that's the point, man, having the conversations. If everybody's going to their corners and, and taking up arms, nothing happens. We've got to come to the middle and have hard conversations, uncomfortable conversations. You know, that's, that's, that's what we need to do. And I think as long as we're doing that, we're going to see some great things continue to move forward. Um, let's talk about Tyler Perry's Medea's farewell play. We talked about yes. this. Ah, oh, just even doing the voice. It's streaming on BET Plus starting August 27th. Uh, how do you think Medea would handle quarantine? Well, babe, I've been wearing my masks. I've been wearing all my masks. Every time I go out, I put on my masks. I have one here and two here. All my masks are all over. <laughs> She can't, she can't say mass, so the mass is, is, is. Uh, I got to be honest, uh, I, I, you talked, I've had you on the show so many times, we've talked about how these movies start with plays and, and, and your fans, it starts small and just grows from there. And I was always like, I have to go see you perform live because I want to see what it's like. I, I really, so you, this is a stage play. This is a full yeah. on play of your final time playing her, but I had no idea. It crushes. It is so fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what we need right now. That's why I tell people, get BET+. Plus, get, sign up for it. Watch this play. It is so fun. If you just want to laugh, just have a good laugh with Medea and Brown and Cora and, and Aunt Bam and all, those, all uh, these characters that you know. Aunt Bam, that's my, yeah. that's my favorite. She Cassie, is, yeah. Cassie Davis is unbelievably yeah. talented. Always scores for me. Hootie Who is all I'm going to say. Who do who? That's right. That's right. That's right. So I tell you, people, if you want to laugh at everything that's going on in the country, just watch the play. You know, we've, we've, over the years, I've sold millions and millions of these DVDs, and now you get to stream it in your house just by signing up for BET Plus, which I think is awesome. Uh, I, 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 I got to ask you, is it really the end of Medea? I mean, you'll never play her again? You know, I said I was, I was done with her unless she had something to say. Watching what's happening in the country right now, I think she has something to say. She may be running for president. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I loved it. Uh, I will also say again about the cast, not only are, are they funny, but gosh, they can really sing. Yeah, yeah, some of the most incredible voices. That's why we have to use those big, huge microphones on the forehead, because we blow out the other little microphones that they use on Broadway. I mean, these no. microphones, yeah, these microphones have to handle some really powerful voices. Uh, I, I couldn't, I was just like, wow, that was yeah. uh, powerful. And uh, we got to see uh, Medea do some, uh, some pretty cool moves at the end. <laughs> yes, yes. She, she went back to her stripper days. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What, yeah. bo bodacious? What was her? Bodacious, baby. <laughs> bodacious Platinum. That was my name as a stripper, Bodacious Platinum. <laughs> there were so many things that made me laugh. It was, well, the cast is fantastic. Uh, and it really, really made me laugh. And we all do need laughter. We need entertainment. And so thanks for everything you do. And also, there's a speech you say at the end of the uh, performance that I think everyone should stick around and just hear you talk about because it's, it, it, it basically tells everyone, hey, don't stop. If yeah. You, if you've got it's something, exactly right. don't stop. Yep, things, don't stop. Things can get hard, they can get tough, but don't stop because had I stopped, I wouldn't be here now sitting in the Diane Carroll soundstage on my studio lot, right? <laughs> so I tell people, no matter how hard it gets, because I've had some really dark days, don't stop. Uh, Tyler, please don't stop. Thanks for taking the time to catch up with me. Uh, you know I love you, man. Good luck with everything. I love you too, buddy. Thank you. On and on and on, uh, I said, and it's on.